Blessings of the Lord be upon you wherever you are under the sound of my voice. This is the day the Lord has made and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Well, um, today we are we are turning this um, this broadcast differently uh, due to um, some uh, changes and some technical stuff that's going on here. We only broadcasting from the um, uh, the page, the page of this of this um, of this um, uh, broadcast. We only concentrating or using just the page today. All right, just the page. So um, bear with us. Now, for those of you who <clears throat> probably may not get it on other platforms, um, just bear with us for the day. All right, we are we are upgrading and testing some things so that uh, we can be very proficient in um, what we have to do also to present um, the continual presenting the good news of Jesus Christ to each and every one of you. Now, um, I may not see, because I think um, I don't, I may not see some of you live, but um, I want you to know that I um, recognize and acknowledge you wherever you are and um okay take this um <clears throat> and so uh, let's see if um, i can see uh some of you to acknowledge who you are but um if not well the important thing is the word all right the important thing is the word so let's get into the word of god um today with a prayer if you are uh, ready father in jesus name we call you father because of Christ Jesus who has reconciled us back to you that we are no longer on the backside of the covenant or the agreement but we are we are reconciled oh hallelujah and we are so grateful thank you oh God for all that you have done and still doing for this wonderful day Lord, this is indeed the day, Lord, you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We are so grateful, grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray for this, your precious ones, under the sound of my voice. Let revelation knowledge flow freely, let understanding increase and abound, and uh, bring us to the saving knowledge of our freedom through Christ Jesus amen and amen well let me okay i see some of you i see francesca francesca it is well girl it is well with you and your house it is well and trust trust me when i say that it is well with you and your house all right it is well with you and your house and let me say that to all of you because scripture tells us to do that it says declare all right make a declaration say to the righteous Say to the righteous, it is well with you and your house. Say to the righteous, so that is exactly what I'm doing. To the righteous, you, it is well with you and your house. Well, if you have your Bibles, come with me to the book of Matthew. If you have your Bibles, if you don't have your Bibles, please go to, I mean, get your notepads, your pens and pencils, and jot down, write down this note, I believe will be a blessing to you. Now, very importantly, all right, because of, again, the changes and stuff here, uh, invite somebody, share the broadcast to your friends and loved ones. And we, 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 want to, we are trying to see certain things. So, again, this is only on the page of this ministry, of the Facebook, only the page today. Uh, we, we're doing some testings and to see that. So share it to your friends who probably may not be getting the notification on the other platforms if they usually come on the other platforms the youtubes and the um the website and all that if they are not or because they may not get it or i don't think they will even get it so please you who are with us right now on this broadcast here share it with your friends and loved ones invite as many as possible now let's go straight to the word of god for the sake of our time today i want to talk to you about what um, I titled this broadcast, Go Therefore, or Go Preach Christ. Preach Christ. 
Apostle Paul said something the other day. He said, if anyone preaches any other message other than Christ, let that person be accursed. In other words, let curse come upon that individual. If anybody preaches any other message, any other gospel, other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, let that person be accursed. Let curse come upon that individual. Why? Because there is, there is, there is some seriousness that one need to understand what Christ Jesus came to do for mankind. And that God so loved the world that he sent Jesus, his only begotten son, to come and function in the inadequacies of man and reconcile man back to himself. God created man to have fellowship with man. He had a covenant. He had an agreement with man man broke his side of the agreement through adam all right now so breaking that side of the agreement there was the distance between god and man now for god so love and the purpose and the reason why he created man couldn't let it be thrown out and so therefore he has to bring man back to him but he's a God who does not change. He said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever shall I be. And so in order not for, for, for God to be accused of, oh, you couldn't do what you say you would do. He has to be God and therefore do what he did by sending Jesus his only begotten son, to come and uh, redeem us back to himself. That's why when you, you see in uh, Galatians chapter, chapter 3, verse 13, I believe, that um, scripture says that Christ has redeemed, has purchased and redeemed us from the curse of the law for which God Establish as a result of that brokenness of the agreement. Now, we are talking about go therefore. Who said that? Who said that? Jesus. Go therefore. Go therefore unto all, to all nations of the earth and make disciples. Go therefore. Come with me to uh, Matthew, the 28th chapter. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Let's look at something here very important. Because today you need to ask yourself, are you going therefore or you are standing still? Are you going therefore as commissioned and commanded by Jesus? And I'm talking directly to believers today. If you are a believer of Christ, if you have received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, this question is to you. Are you going therefore or you are standing still? He says, go therefore. Research is showing that Christianity is slowly, slowly, compared to other religions that are fast, Interestingly, a lot of people have even, I mean, they are, they, are, they are shifting from their first love to something else. Go therefore. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Let's read from the 16th verse and um, see what Jesus has commissioned you, the believer. Because the believers then took this word and then went into various areas of the world, various nations. And this gospel, as they teach and preached, has passed on from them to other believers who came to receive 
other believers, other believers, other believers, other believers, to where you and I are today. And the question is, are you doing? Or you are sitting still? Are you doing? Are you? Or you are sitting still? Let's look at that scripture very carefully. Matthew 28. Matthew, the 28th chapter. This rest, from the 16th verse. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the, to the mountain which Jesus instructed them. Or had designated that. All right, all right. And verse 17 says, Matthew, the 28th chapter, the 17th verse we are right now. Least grace. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted that it was really he, Jesus. He told them, and when they saw him in that area, some doubted. I'm wondering, those who doubted, what, what were they doing there? If you doubted what he said, what were you doing there in the first place? See, the reason why you are sitting still is because you are doubting. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why you are sitting still. The reason why you are not making disciples and you have left this quote unquote church pastor's job. Ain't nothing like pastor's job. See, the more I study the scripture, I realize that we have allowed religion to come and twist this whole thing around. Where did you see Jesus calling some pastors and some this and all that? Beloved, we may, I may be able, I'm, I'll try to see if I can get there, but if not, we'll pick it up. Apostle Paul and his ministry is where we see this. But the actual commission was for the disciples and if you are a disciple who's a disciple a believer a follower of christ and if you are one of them as you call yourself then you are to go here and make disciples so the question is are you going therefore or you are standing or sitting still watching everybody and listening to everybody and looking at everybody but are you making disciples I wonder what those unbelievers, if you doubt you are an unbeliever, you cannot, be, you cannot believe and doubt at the same time. Beloved, they can't coexist. It's either you believe or you don't believe. Let us stop this hunky-punky kind of Christian life. It's you believe or you don't believe. He says, go, therefore. Watch this. Jesus came and said to them, all authority, verse 18, all authority, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All, underline that word, all. All power has been given to me. Go therefore, verse 19, this is where our key is go therefore and make disciples go therefore and make disciples go therefore and make disciples who was jesus talking to the disciples are you one of them are you a disciple a disciple again i want to repeat myself you are a follower or a believer of christ jesus and his ministry and his finished work and so Jesus spoke to them. These individuals obeyed, went, and did exactly what Jesus said. And those who receive it and were baptized have also been doing that all the way to where you are today. But the question is, are you doing it? Or you think that is only carved for a specific people? Jesus never mentioned no pastor no uh, whatever he says you believers your disciples go so the reason why christianity is not spreading as quickly as it should be is as a result of 
the lack of understanding of this commission call it what the great commission the great commission the greatest commission the greatest assignment given to mankind is this let's break it down he said go therefore and make disciples of all the nations help the people to learn of me believe in me and obey my words let's pause for it for a second here he says help the people to learn of me help them they don't know me you have come to know christ you said you have come to believe him you said well you there's a commission there's a commandment there's an instructions by the one that you are following from for 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 him you call yourself a christian he said help the people to learn of me help the people to believe in me and let them obey my words how can they do that if you are not doing it and then he says baptize them baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit teaching them here we go again teaching them to observe everything teaching them to observe everything that i have commanded you teaching them to observe everything that i have commanded you and lo i am with you always and lo i am with you always it looks like people have put their personal needs first before the commission and be, beloved i i the, the the longer i live to see our christian life this christian life about jesus the difference between the covenant that god has made with men he is a god of a covenant he always make covenant why do i say that because from the time since i've been born and checking all right from the genesis of this earth by reading the word of god that is what i have seen he makes he establishes covenant and he has a covenant with you and i in this time dispensation we are living in this is the covenant or this is a new covenant the bible says a new covenant that he has made with you and I. So get that. There's a covenant between God and man. And if you are a man living, the, the, the definition of man in this contest, okay, comprises male and female, both genders. So if you are a man, God has established or has, has instituted a covenant a new and a better covenant with you through christ jesus now this jesus says you go and make disciples by teaching them helping them to learn of me what i came to do what i stood for help them to obey all that i have said to you and then baptize them to affirm their belief and trust in me baptize them in the name of the father who sent me and of the son me and of the holy spirit whom i have sent to help you and he didn't stop right there he said he said teach them to observe everything that i have commanded you and lo i am with you always mm. 
That's a silly moment. I am with you always. I am with you always. Is Jesus able to provide my needs? Is Jesus able to help me out? Because obviously, many have put their own personal needs first. And therefore, the commission has been left for a few and a handful of people. This is where I believe that we have made a vacuum, a space. Like Paul, Apostle Paul says, there are people who have come in masquerading themselves as believers, okay? Masquerading themselves as believers only to put religion in the minds of people who have not come to know the right message of Jesus Christ and his finished work and therefore think that Christianity is like lottery. You have to give so you can receive. You have to sow so that you can reap. Beloved, there are people who understand this natural phenomenon, who don't confess to be Christians. Why do I say it's natural? It is there. God made it so. If you go to the book of Genesis, you see where God made this is after God has, has, has flooded the earth to cleanse the earth. Okay? And the only eight people or so who were left with Noah and his family, he, he made that declaration that as, as long as this earth remains, seed time and harvest will never cease. Summer and winter will always be there. The sun and the moon will always be there. So this idea of you have to sow, you know, so that God can help, can receive, can bless you. Beloved, the whole thing has been twisted. You don't have, as my father, let me just be blunt with you. You don't have to be a Christian to experience that. You don't even have to be a Christian. The difference of you being a Christian is for you to have eternal life through Christ Jesus. That is the only the difference. That is the difference. Because there is, there is life after this. Okay? But if you want to just enjoy this, this time, this period here, and don't want to think of life after, well, then you have that choice too. You have that choice. But let me tell you that Christ did not die in vain because of whatever you choose to believe. He did not die in vain. Seed time and harvest will never cease. Go and check Genesis. And that is part of the old covenant. So God establishing a new covenant with you by Christ Jesus. You must understand what this new covenant agreement is. So that as Christ said, go to all nations and make disciples, teach the people, the discipleship is all about helping the people to learn of me, those who do not know me. Beloved, don't fool yourself. There's a lot of people who have not come to know Christ. Oh, just by looking at, what, a thousand or two thousand or ten thousand or twenty thousand sitting in one location doesn't mean everybody on the face of this earth have come to know Christ. Even in that very city, there's a lot of people over there. There's a lot of people who have not come to the saving knowledge 
of Jesus Christ. And this is what and why Jesus said, you believers, you disciples, you followers, you Christians, go to all nations and make disciples. Teaching them, he says, he says, help the people to learn of me, he says, to believe in me. You know, this area of believe in me, Jesus often say this. He often said that. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? Jesus often said that. Do you believe? Do you believe, he says. Do you believe? Do you believe? Why do Jesus constantly saying this, this in making this statement, do you believe? Because you know why, beloved? That is the central call of man's decision for eternal life or for just this temporal life. And so Jesus, for God so loved the world, the Bible says that Jesus came to be to be to 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 reconcile us back to the Father. He says, and lo, I am with you always. Lo, I am with you always. I am with you always. Do you believe I am with you always? Jesus says, I am with you always. I am with you always. If Jesus is saying, I am with you always, do you believe? And if you do believe, if you do believe, then why are you not making disciples? Why are you not? And 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 your your attitude is like, well, he is a pastor, she is a pastor, he is a, who said that. I am going by what Jesus said. I am going by what Apostle Paul has. I mean, that has brought so much confusion, okay, in this institution that to me, I don't even want to want to waste my, my I, want, I don't even want to waste time talking about it. It has it has caused people to be disappointed it has caused people to leave the faith it has caused people based on individuals who have seen this as business to enrich themselves don't look for no other job to do no profession this is their profession and has caused people to leave there are people who don't even want to hear nothing about church. In this fivefold ministry, I always say this by Paul, Apostle Paul. So therefore, has become, you know, uh, 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 um, uh, um, a hindrance has become a hindrance for for the growth and understanding of those who have not. And yet people have not received Christ. Because you, a disciple watching me and listening to me, you don't see yourself as somebody who's supposed to go and make disciples. And Jesus broke it down. This is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to do. He says, help the people to learn of me. He didn't give that assignment to a specific person. He gave this to the believers. Are you one of them? Are you a believer? Are you a Christian? If your answer is here, then this is 
directly directed to you. This great commission is not for in the specific individuals, it's for you, the believer. Start calling people, start going to nations. See, this is where this is why I encourage you to use this social media, okay, to do that. Because you may be sitting in a particular country, probably don't even know where to start, in which country to go to, and all that. The time you are using to go on the social media and watching some foolish things, use that to speak the word of God to people, to the world. How about that? Use that. Because Jesus talks about nations. Nations. When you get on, right now, me, right now on this platform here, on this social media platform here, nations are seeing me. I am not hidden. I have not run away from nobody. I am here. And you are watching me from, people are watching me from India, Pakistan, and Africa. They are all over the place. And they are listening to this message. And so maybe somebody, your mindset is like, well, I mean, where do, which country do I, do I need to go to? I don't even have money. I don't even know where, where to start. Beloved, this is the place. This is the, the, the tools for you to get into the nations. Don't just be sending comments. There are people who want to see your face. Jesus didn't send, send comments. He didn't send, send comments. Post stuff. He says, go and make disciples. What you have understood, what you have come to understand, and for you becoming a believer, you teach others, he says. Teach others. Oh, as for me, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm shy. Oh, really? So, so if everybody is shy like you, who, should, who will go and make disciples? Why didn't you keep your shyness, okay, and not being a believer? Why don't you keep your shyness? This ministry, this teachings, is not one of those things, the ones you want to hear because you know what? You have always put your needs first before the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have always put your needs first. So you are thinking that, you know, I want to hear a message, but, you know, I have to give so that I can receive. I have to do this so that I can get the results and all that. Beloved, this is what you have to do to get a result. And just in case you don't know, Jesus also said this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness and all that you are, you are, you are, you are so concerned about will be added to you. Added. Additions are things that you don't work for. The last time I checked. The reason why you don't even, you, you have not, you haven't received a phone call for somebody to say, listen, I was just thinking of you and man, I, I want to bless you. Is because you are putting your needs first before God. God knows how to bless you. You'll be so sitting, you'll be sitting in your house and somebody, God will knock the hand of somebody to bless you. If God knows how to use even raven to feed a human being, he knows how to take care of you. You haven't come to believe him yet. And therefore, your, your, your daily concerns of your personal life is more important to you than the commission, than the than the assignment that Jesus has given. He says, go, and I am with you always. Think, listen to that. He says, I am with you always. Do you think Jesus will be with you and not provide for you?
Ask those who were with him. He always made a provision. Whether they needed food or whether they needed money to pay their taxes, whatever, Jesus always provided. Always. And he says, I am with you always. Beloved, if you don't come to understanding this, and you want to put your own stuff first, well, let me trump you with this. Okay? Let me trumpet you with this. You are always going to have challenges because you are always going to be struggling to take care of your needs. But if you want to understand that God takes care of his people, then put him first and put his work first. Jesus says, I am with you always. Remaining with you perpetually, remaining with you, regardless of circumstance and on every occasion, regardless, even to the end of the age. Now, do you believe Jesus? Do you believe him? Or you are believing something else do you believe that's the question do you believe or you believe in something else when we come to this place of giving okay giving and how religion has been able to persuade your ignorance of thinking that you have to play the lotto in church, like uh, um, Benson Idahosa said, you know, bring and receive. What God is expecting of you, and I want to show you that, is your praise. The sacred, when we talk about sacrifices, it's a sacrifice of praise. Praising him for what? Praising him for making you. Praising him for making you. You know, <laughs> come with me to Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Let's read from the 15 verse. Hebrews, the 13, the 15 verse. All right. Through him, the Bible says, through him, oh, glory. Through him, therefore, let us at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise at all times. Sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name through him therefore let us at all times not when you have put your your your, your priorities before the commission of jesus or like somebody say i received my breakthrough you receive a breakthrough and that is when you praise God. Well, can you praise him for who he has made you to be? A human being? A human being? Through him, therefore, let us at all times offer up to God. To God. Not to anybody, but to God. When you are giving, let your giving be to God, to God, a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of your lips, the thankfulness, acknowledging and confessing and glorifying his name. If you want to go there, this is where it is. Always, he says, 
Give him the sacrifice of praise with your lips. That Lord, I thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for another day that you are you have not finished with me. Lord, I thank you for my strength. I thank you for my healing. I thank you for my children. I thank you. I thank you. Give him the sacrifice of praise with your lips, he says. At all times. At all times. Not sometimes, but all times. Not sometimes, beloved, but all times. Why? Because this is what he desires. This is what he requests. This is what he asks. Give him the sacrifice of praise with your lips. I hope you are, you are getting something here. We need to understand, beloved, this great commission and not think that it is cut only for a specific people. And stop and start making disciples. Stop sitting and thinking that it's cut for just a specific individuals and stopped making disciples how shall they hear without a messenger the bible says how shall they hear and how shall the messenger go if the messenger is not sent but the messengers are sent but they are not going Who are the messengers? The disciples. Are you one of them? Who are the messengers? The Christians, the followers of the Christ. Are you one of them? You are, if you said you are a Christian. The month of October is over. How many people did you disciple? Or you are so consumed with your own self and all that you think that the world is coming over you as though you created the world and the world is on your head and your it's it's just it's just breaking your neck it's like you have so much a heavy load you don't see nothing else how many souls how many people have you disciple who has had the word of god the teachings of christ from you the, this month this week this day who jesus has made this up listen <clears throat> you know the days of all this all like somebody said where your teachings and all meetings and preachings and all that they are over it don't mean nothing because by the end of the day it's all about taking your little dime that you have with you. You don't mean nothing. If you are not doing exactly what Jesus has said you should do. And if you are so concerned about yourself, me, myself, and I, well, that selfish attitude is not going to get you nothing. It's only, let me tell you something, it's only going to give you continuous headache of waking up in the morning because his grace is sufficient. He loves, listen, you, you know, we, we, scripture says we love him because why? He first loves us. He even loves you. He, he loves you. Now, whether you do or you don't, you may get opportunity to enjoy his day that he has, he has made. But whether you are going to have that opportunity to have eternal life yourself, like Jesus says, many will come in the day, and that day is coming. Beloved, you better believe it. Whatever Jesus said, you better believe it. You better believe it. A day is coming when they will come to and say, Lord, we 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 even spoke in you, you know, we heal people in your name, we did miracles in your name. Listen, we're gonna see this this at the right time. 
You better do it. When you hear his voice today, the Bible says, don't harden your heart. When you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Do not harden your heart. Now, come with me to um, Romans, the, um, the eighth chapter, Romans chapter eight. Romans, the eighth chapter. Let's read from the ninth verse. Want to see something? Just see something here. Very important. However, you are not living in the flesh. The Bible says controlled by the sinful nature, but in the spirit. And if in fact the spirit of God lives in you, directing and guiding you, that's if, if in fact the spirit of God lives in you. If in fact it lives in you. So it, 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 it leaves a room for you to Di dissect this and check yourself is the spirit of god living in me how do you say the spirit of god lives in you and you don't do what jesus says you should do how do you say that jesus says go and make disciples he says i am with you always well that i am with you always is to tell you that the his spirit Okay, the Holy Spirit is what he's referring to. He's with you. Because you cannot go on your own ability. He is. So if the Spirit, that's what he says. If in fact the Spirit of God lives in you. If in fact and guiding you. So you need to ask, check yourself. You say you're, you're a believer. You, you're a Christian. Check yourself. Check yourself. Let's continue. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him and is not a child of God, the Bible says. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. So if you say you are a Christian, meaning that you belong to the Christ, you belong to Christ, and Christ is saying, that this is what you, you have to do so that others will also come to know what I, I have done for the world and you are not doing it, then question yourself. I am even questioning your, your, your Christianity. You question yourself. Am I a true disciple? Or I am just, because everybody, it's, it's a fancy thing you know, people, I see people dress nice and they go to church. So if I don't get them involved, they will think that there's something wrong with me. So therefore, let me do that. Or do you really understand this? If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, that person does not belong to him, the Bible says. You don't belong to him. You don't belong to him. And you are not a child of God. Look at it. Romans chapter 8, read the, the ninth verse. And you are not a child of God. Now, this is a straight talk. And can't sugarcoat it in any way. It just has to be as it is. Are you making disciples or you are not making disciples? Are you telling others about the finished work of Jesus Christ? Or you yourself, you probably don't even understand that yet. Or you are putting your own personal needs before and above the assignment Jesus has given to you. Which one? Are you doing which one today I came to just try to bring your mindset to a place of a sila moment think about this he says go therefore go therefore let me let's close I'm going to close here with with that scripture again. Go therefore. Go therefore. 
maybe maybe you you know you've not been taught about what your christian life is supposed to be the responsibility of your christian life if not if you've not been taught beloved you've heard that today from this ministry and on this platform you are to go and make disciples matthew 28 the last book of matthew or the last page of matthew matthew chapter 28 we started there we're going to close from there matthew chapter 28 come there and let's close and after that see what you want to want to do jesus verse let's take it from verse 18 jesus came up and said to them they to who the disciples all authority all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me go therefore i mean look look at look at this picture for a second he says all power is given to me both from both in heaven and on earth all absolute rule authority power is given to me okay Absolutely. In other words, hmm, who else has that power? Nobody. Go therefore, verse 19. I've been given the power. I have the power. And you are my disciples, you claim. You are my followers, you claim. Then I'm giving you the power. Because I have the power. So you go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. I'm giving you that power that I have received in heaven and on earth. All that, that pertains to every power is given to me. Beloved, it doesn't leave any room for you to be so concerned about these demons and Satan and demons and Satan and demons. Jesus says, all power. Now he says, verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Make disciples. How do I make disciples? What is it all about? He says, help the people to learn of me. To know me. They haven't come to understand who I am and what I came to do for mankind. So you help them to know that. You who claim you have received me and know what I came to do, my, my, my teachings and what I, you, you, you understand that I came to fulfill the law. I didn't come to, to, to throw it away. I came to fulfill it and brought you guys into this dispensation of grace to reconcile you back to the Father. This is you understand that, so then tell people, please go and do that. He says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, help the people to learn of me, believe in me that I am that I am the resurrection and the life. Let people believe in me that I am the resurrection and life. No one goes to the Father except by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let people believe me. All that I have taught you, all that you have learned, let them believe. How do you let them believe? By telling them, by teaching them. And believe in me, he says, and let them obey my words. In other words, let them also take my words. Believe in, in me. And take my words, what I came to do, so that they will also go and tell others. And then you baptize them, he says, in the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20 says, teaching them 
teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Remaining with you perpetual, regardless of any circumstance that you may face. I am with you. I am with you. I am with you always. Do you believe Jesus or you don't? It's either you believe or you don't. I am with you always, he says. I am with you always. Beloved, this is what believers you are asked to do. Fulfilling the Great Commission. <laughs> and I know you've heard that before. The Great Commission. The Great Commission. You have been commissioned by Christ Jesus to go and make disciples. Tell others, teach them to learn of me, Jesus says. To believe me, he says. To obey my words, he says. Think about it. Have you done that? You say you're a believer. You said you're a follower. You say you're a Christian. Have you done that? Have you? Or you are so consumed with your own problems. Jesus, you can wait. There were some people like that who wanted to come and follow him. They wanted to come and follow him. Jesus, I want to follow you. He says, are you sure? Okay, let's go. He says, then he says, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, let, let me go and, and, and bury my dead and then I'll come follow you. Jesus says, uh, you ain't ready. Are you truly ready to be a Christian? Are you truly ready to be a Christian? To be called a Christian? I am a Christian, yes. I am born again, yes. And I am so proud to be a Christian. I don't care what you're thinking of me. I am a Christian. When I when I haven't had a, the, the the you know the, the opportunity to 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 preach the word of Christ and nothing else, it's like man, somebody need to hear the. The word, let me, let me either, either, you know, re, even replay a message. Go and make disciples. Beloved, the other day, I, I, I don't have much time. Um, my time is gone. Peter asked Jesus something. And that was so interesting. I wish I had time to show it to you. Jesus, um, I think it's in John. G, uh, Peter asked, said to Jesus, Jesus, we have left everything to follow you for the sake of the gospel. We've left everything. What do we get? What do we get? G, Peter asked Jesus, where, where is that scripture? It's in, it's in John, I think. We've left everything to follow you, he says. What do we get? Jesus says, Peter, let me tell you something that you don't understand. Let me tell you something that you don't understand. Nobody leaves husband, wife, children, buildings, business, whatever, for the sake of the gospel. And not get a hundredfold return in this lifetime and even life eternal. No one. No one. So if you are so consumed about your, your own personal issues and putting that first before Christ and his commandments and commission, and you say you're a believer, beloved, you need to understand that he knows how to take care of you better than you struggling to take care of yourself. And if you can check Jesus and his time on earth and in ministry, nobody went hungry hanging around him. Nobody, nobody, you know, 
continue to be sick around him. Nobody continue to be weak around him. Nobody continue to, I mean, put all those things you put first before Christ. Nobody. He told Peter, I said, Peter, you don't understand. Remember, I used your boat. You gave me your boat first. And after that, I told you to throw your net. Because I have the power. I know, I know, I know how to, 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 to let the, the forces of, of nature obey my command. So if you are so consumed about whatever you are going through first, and yet you claim you are a Christian and not going to speak and teach, then you haven't really come to understand what Jesus was asking you to do. And I pray that today you have, by receiving this message. And if you are, put Christ first. I am telling you, he has never failed me. I don't know about you, but he has never. What? What I'm going to eat? Or where I'm going to put my head? Or what I'm going to put on my, on, on, on my body? He's never failed me. Because I believe him. I believe Jesus. Do you? I believe him. Do you? It's not this fanciful thing and this big building and trying to, you know, just going crazy and how we're going to pay the bills and all those things. Beloved, come on. Go and make disciples. If you have not listening to me, you have not given your life to Jesus. You need to do that. And then you go and make disciples too. If you have not given your life to Jesus, you got to do that today. I want to follow him. I want to, I want to receive Jesus. I want to make Jesus my Lord and my Savior. You are that individual. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. And without any 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 more time wasting, let's pray this prayer together. You, that individual, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to make Jesus my Lord and my Savior. So I, I want to I want to preach His word. I want to go to the nations and teach people. I want to do what He says I should do. I want to fulfill the great commission. I know Jesus will take care of me. Mm hmm. Oh, yes. He will. With the, listen, he will. Do you hear what Jesus says? He says, I am with you always. Always. You don't see him physically with you. His spirit is with us. Why? Because he promised. Go and read the book of John, the 14th chapter. You'll see that. He, he said his spirit will come. The spirit that was in him, operated in him to do all that, to make sure that those who were hungry around him got food to eat, that there were even excess. And all this and everything that you can learn, that same spirit, Jesus says, I will let you receive the spirit. He will be with you. Think about that. Why are you so consumed about putting yourself first before God? And Jesus says, you put God first. Seek ye first. Seek ye first. Seek first the things of God. Making sure your righteousness is through me. Your righteousness before God is not by your works and all that you're trying to do. And all these things, he says, will be added to you. Oh, not some. Beloved, when you plant orange seed, pineapple seed, when you plant orange pineapple uh, bananas or whatever you plant beloved 
they don't all germinate at the same time. You don't harvest all of them at the same time. You can plant all of them at the same time, but they come out, okay, the harvest of them comes in a different times. That's life. That's life. You need to understand this so that you don't worry yourself thinking about somebody's going ahead of you and all that. It, it's all, it's nothing but distraction. It takes your mind off Christ. Somebody bought a brand new car, so you too need a brand new car. I mean, who said that? Somebody got a, a new clothes, so you got to look, you know. I mean, what, do you, who gave you that wrong teachings about Christianity? Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? Like Apostle Paul was asking the, 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 the brethren in Galatia. Who has bewitched you for you to believe wrong? You have received wrong and you are believing wrong and therefore you are acting wrong. Oh, I pray that today you will begin to receive right as a believer. And if you are not a believer, have not received or made Jesus your Lord and your Savior, receive right today receive him receive christ jesus and if you are that person i want to pray with you with this prayer let's pray together say lord jesus i thank you for this teaching today i see myself as a sinner i confess my sins of not receiving you forgive me and come into my life from this moment i confess you with my mouth i believe you in my heart that you are christ and god raised you from the dead thank you lord jesus for receiving me i believe that you have received me and i'm thankful jesus baptize me now with your spirit that i may go and make disciples of the world and all the nations using this social media and also the opportunity to even go to travel to other places i thank you jesus in your name i pray amen and amen amen and amen jesus said in john chapter 3 verse 3 you must be born again and that's what you did by receiving him you have received a transformation it's a spiritual transformation you've been sanctified for his purpose now make sure you get yourself your bible if you don't have your bible get one all right make sure you get a bible get one so that you can start reading for god to speak to you when you read your bible god speaks to you when you pray you speak to god i hope you're understanding that so get your bible and you start reading especially coming for our daily broadcast and teaching of god's word so that you can increase and mature in christ jesus all right and then you you have to you know um go and make disciples so get your bibles if you don't have one and cannot afford one please let us know okay we have embarked on our one million bible distribution vision 2020 ending December 2020, that we have distributed and given 1 million Bibles to people all over the world. All right? So if you don't have one, cannot afford one, let us know. We will send you a Bible. Do our best to send you a Bible. All right? Okay? On this, on this note, uh, we want to encourage all of you listening to us, watching us, to be part of this vision, to get Bibles. Okay, so that people will receive and begin to read. So help us with your financial seed, okay, financial contribution or donation. You know what? Purpose in your heart. How many Bibles do you, you want to help give to people? Okay, 
Um, um, some say that, you know, pastor, I want to give a hundred Bibles. Some say, I want to, I want to, you know, give 500 Bibles. I want to give 20 Bibles. I want to give 10 and all that. Okay. So purpose in your heart. You know, I got a feedback this morning from um, a nation of a price of a Bible there because we want to get the Bibles in the local languages for those who are not English speaking people, but they, they understand and can read their language. Like, um, you know, the last month or two months ago, okay, the Bibles that we that got in the hands of those in Pakistan, all right, it was in their language. So 20 Bibles, they got 20 Bibles in their language in this particular church. Okay, we're looking to send Bibles um, in the Telugu language to India. Okay, in Africa, uh, there's so many dialects over there, like some of them, you know, this country. <laughs> when they, 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 they have, they, we need, they need Bibles in, in Tui, in Tui. <laughs> T-W-I, Tui. Okay, that's the language they want the Bibles. Those of you from there, you know what I'm talking about. They need Bibles in Tui. <laughs> All right, so we got to get Bibles. So besides that, that of the English Bibles, we want to get Bibles in different languages for them as well. Vision 2020, 1 million Bibles. Join this journey. Let's do it together. Send your best gift today. Go to the website of this ministry. Uh, the address is www.patrickwenu global ministries or patrickwenu ministries.com and look for the word that says donate. Click on that and follow the rest of the instructions. If you have a Zelle or a Cash App and you want to use that, you can use this number 914. 5729816 again 9145729816 use that number for your Zelle or cash up if you want to make a donation for bibles okay to this ministry you can do that if you want to reach us either by email which is icfm29 at gmail.com by email icfm 29 at gmail.com or if you want to um, also call you can if you want to call you can the number here is plus one if you are outside the united states plus one nine one four two four six two four two one nine plus one nine one four two four six two four two one let us hear from you okay let's let me hear from you as always want you to know you don't have no trouble all you need is your faith in God. Don't forget, don't forget our trip to Israel is also coming up in 2020, April 2020. We're going to be, for those who want to also be baptized in the River Jordan, as of Jesus, you can do, take opportunity to do that. We'll definitely be, be at his tomb to, okay, on the Resurrection Sunday. It's going to be beautiful. So prepare to join us. You can call the same number to get more information. Uh, you see that the flyer is not on there because we are, again, testing some uh, systems here to see certain things and all that. So forgive us that a flyer is not on your screen. But if you go to the website or to the to the page of this of my Facebook, you're going to see that. It's there. So make sure you get there and get all the information. But if you need further information, please call, again, 914-246-2421. And then we'll furnish you with all the information you need. For pastors who are interested in joining us, I want you to know there's a, a great discount for a pastors with a group of five or more. Okay, that should be able to save you some money for you to use it for other things as well. So let's hear from you. All right. Well, I'm going to leave you here for the day. Have a wonderful day. I want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all that getting, get understanding. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.